out. We are recording now. Awesome. So um, I'm going to follow a friendly GitHub intro that is adapted from Mozilla Foundation. Um, you all can open the slides and I'll share my screen quickly, but be aware that I will be switching between slides and GitHub repository, which you might also need to do. So let's do that. Yes, there you go. All right, so can, I can't see you now, but I hope that you can see what, what I'm looking at. I see people popping in on the slides too, which is a good thing for me to see. Um, so first of all, what is collaborative document? And this is gonna be an interactive session. So please unmute yourself. And if you have like one quick answer, let me know or add it on the Google doc, which I will check on my other computer. Let's take like a 30 seconds and think about what does collaborative document mean to you? A document that all the collaborators can access, uh, read and edit. Absolutely, that's that's uh, that's the best way to define it. So, what are the main challenges that you face? Like, does someone have like really big challenge that they face on a regular basis? Uh, clear, clearly, see who has done what edits, especially if the collaborative group is big. Right. Exactly. I think that's one. Another is. Um, editing at the same time as someone else. Exactly. The conflict. It's very difficult to manage when you're editing exactly the same location. Are there more problems of collaborative documents? Keeping traces of all of the edits. Like if I wrote something and someone else directly edits without being not in suggestion mode, but directly in edit mode, I don't remember what I wrote and what kind, like what is the improvement that the new person has actually made? Exactly, like commenting each changes. Uh, so over history, you can probably, it would be great if we can track a history of why a certain document was changed. Um, there are many, main, many reasons, but the reasons that you just stated are three really, really huge reasons, right, that, that we are, basically talking about this today. So when we work with many people and develop a document, it's just sometimes very asynchronous, uh, can have conflicting edit. We don't know where something is located. So if we are not sharing a document which is online, it's very hard to judge where in the Google document or where in the Dropbox something is located. And it won't be standard for everyone. Everyone's path for a file can be very different. And also at this time, we're working with people in different time zones. So it could be that you're sleeping and your collaborator is doing a lot of suggestion where you don't have your input. And versions, like versions is one of the biggest reasons where the naming system is so important. So think about that you have a repository, you create a folder and you create a lot of files and you add a lot of things, so that's you. And now, after a while, you create another folder. So plus will be for adding something, yellow for editing something, and minus for removing something. So you go to the file, you add something, you remove something. And that's a standard process that goes on. So what happens in a, in a scenario where we are writing and exchanging file via email, we might do something like this, right, that we have Oh, there's this first copy, the second copy will have why something was done or by whom was, was it done. A lot of time when I share a Google document, someone will edit and add their initials at the name, end of the name of the file. And at the end, this file name will increase to double the name size because six people were working on it. And it's very hard to maintain those kind of naming system. Can you give me an example from your own work uh, beside thesis? or application where these kind of versioning are very important. I'm gonna have a look at Google Doc if you're writing there.
manuscript yes protocols yeah and now if i say that we in increase the scope of the collaboration beyond document then we have codes and programs right if you share a piece of code with someone it's much harder to trace changes in there because your code might have 50 lines and it's very hard to see where the change was made and why certain change was made so keep that in the back of your mind that what we're talking about is applicable beyond document as well something what kiara said actually checking with every timestamp in history where something was changed so for example in one timestamp something was added in a file in the second timestamp a huge part of that file was completely edited out then someone edited something in then edited out and so on right and all these timestamp are stored in in a minute we will look at github and each timestamp can be annotated why something was done. So this is called revisions and versions. It's even convenient in GitHub that you can actually go back to the step. So you can decide that, okay, this was a mistake. I really want to go back to where I was. You can go back in history and you can create that as the main file. So what is version control? Has, ha, how many of you have worked with version control before? Okay, a few of you. Um, so I, would, I, I really hope you can help me in, in conducting this uh, topic because this is something that you deal with when you wanna have a system in place in order to have these kind of standard way of recording your timestamp, recording the name, recording a notation of why some changes are made. So version control is management of changes called revision to any type of information. A simple file versioning is also version control, but there are tools like Google Drive and Dropbox where you also have version control. This is something that is very new in Google document, but you can actually check and look at the history when some version of file existed so you don't completely lose your previous versions but then there are advanced to like subversion and git sorry and the revision here we mean by is the changes associated with the timestamp and the person who's making the change and that cha that really addresses a few things that you all were talking about the benefit of version control that you can go back in previous version, you can store the history of changes and you can collaborate with others much easier. So Google document is quite effective as well. Uh, Dropbox is somewhat effective, but GitHub, uh, what we're gonna talk about is an open way of working uh, with collaborative projects. So let's think about now again, GitHub when we write something into a file we save that file we commit certain change and these are very github specific terminology might not mean actually a lot in the general language but there are a few terms that you will actually later introduce and commit will be one of them so now that now you're a dinosaur actually i think <laughs> and then you have three people who are working with you and they're making changes at the same time and they're saving changes as commitment. And they can also annotate what kind of changes they're making and why they're making it. And now at the end of other side, other people can look at these changes and can decide which changes they wanna um, consider. And we can do that in GitHub. So what is GitHub? How many of you have created a profile on GitHub already? Yes, all of you. Tell me if you haven't, and I'll give you 30 seconds to uh, open an account. It's, it's, um, it's, so while I'm talking, please go on your browser and look into github.com and please create a profile. 
So GitHub hosts your repository online. It helps you work with contributors. It provides web interface for version control, and it can be used for project management communication. That's something we might just demonstrate towards the end, but uh, it has huge capacity if you want to use it on a regular basis. And it is useful for any project where a group of people are working together. So let's get to know. Um, so I'm going to open my GitHub account. So you go on github.com and if you're signed in, you should see something sim something similar or somewhat similar. On the right end, you will see your own profile. Next to your face, there's a plus sign. And what we're gonna do today is create a test repository. You can totally do this on your real repository, but if you wanna avoid um, editing something unintentionally, it's better that we create one for test. So when you click on the plus, it asks you what you wanna do. So I definitely wanna open a new repository. We click on the new repository. And in the repository, now I can decide what I wanna call it. So if, as I'm saying that, if you want to create your own projects repository, you can write that name. But here I'm going to write friendly GitHub OLS. And now here you can optionally add description, but you can always add that when you have created. Uh, you can choose between public and private, it's better to have public uh, because we're talking about collaborating with people and you can initialize this repository with a readme file. So I will at this point initialize with a readme file. So I'm gonna click on that and create a repository. Okay, I'm going back here. Okay. That's not what I meant to do. Anyway, so maybe I'll ask you to check. Can you all show a thumbs up to you or uh, write a plus on the chat if you've created one test repository? And you, can you tell me when to move on? Oh, you, I can't hear you. Well, okay, I'm failing doing uh, computering. No, okay. um, yeah, let, let's just have everyone put the, the plus in the chat once you've added your repository and I will keep track of those. I think we're good. We have approximately the right number now. Okay, so it's time for us to congratulate you <laughs> if this was your first repository. Um, so the name doesn't uh, matter, right? Because these names are very personal to your project. So if you called it Friendly GitHub Collab or Friendly Collab Party or OLS Kenya or something else that's uh, very uh, personal for you. So now moving on. Oh, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> uh, what you saw that we clicked on read, read me file, this is something that we have been discussing in the last cohort call and it was also your assignment. And what you see right now, there's nothing. It just says there's a header and this header has my file name. And read me file is place where you would have basic information about your project. So anybody new can come and read about it. And if they wanna learn something new, they can click on the links that you've added on the readme file. So we're gonna move on to 
writing something in readme file and in order to write something in readme file um, you can click here and here you would see a pen or pencil sign which says edit this file so we will click on edit this file and what we immediately see that it actually is not what it looked like it has a hash symbol in front of it and it has a word next to it if you look at this i sign the preview this preview changes that into something bigger nicer looking so if we go back to editing file this kind of formatting is called markdown and i know that because this file was created with dot md md stands for markdown and it's a very powerful text editing tool which is very simple and very friendly so one hash means the first header i want to change my header to look better than this so i'm going to write capital f i'll edit this i'll change formatting i don't like to call it ols so i'll call it open life science And now I want to also create a second header header. And now second header can be created by two hash symbol. This is for OLS1. And I want to now create third header. I want to write in third header, this is a test. So people don't take this repository seriously. If you go on preview changes, you would see that there's a red mark and this red mark stands for that i changed something in that line and then it shows by green sign what was added so as you see that for one hash there's a header one two hash header two three hash header three and it's not just about header now you can start writing here so this markdown now i'm introducing you to markdown formatting so when you write something without anything in front of it, it appears as a standard text and you can always go on the preview changes and you can see that this is a simply formatted text. In this, if you want to create a list, you can either start with a star Or you can also number this. So if we look at this now, you will see that if you start with the star, it will show as non-numbered bullet points. And if you start with numbers, it shows as uh, numbering. Okay, we can come back and change this again, but now I actually want to commit this change. And when you scroll down you will see commit changes as we mentioned that commit is very github specific word which is about saving it saying yes i'm saving it here i'm going to tell what i'm trying to do added a readme file with some content and it, optionally you can also write a bit more introduced markdown there are a lot more you can do in Markdown and we will see that as we go along. But for now, we will commit change. There are two options. One is commit, commit directly to the master branch. For now, we're gonna do that and later come back to explaining second option. So there you go. You got content in your readme file. So if we go back again on my GitHub repository, which I just created, it has only one file which is the front file of my project and it has lots of content right now. Okay. So what is, what is readme file? It's a landing page for your repository. You can add content about your project. You can list task of wearing expertise clearly. So for example, if you have opened a project alone and you want to invite people in this readme file, you can list what tasks are to be done in my community, what expertise are needed to do this task. Uh, 
and if you can define it by how much time and what skill are needed it's even better because your contributor can decide what they want to do so if your your readme file if you remember matthews was saying that's your only chance to retain your con contributors because if your readme file doesn't tell enough information that uh, makes them excited about your project, they might just not go and look into the detail. So you, use your readme file as a place where you want to really welcome people. Um, if, if you also remember, his readme file was much better than mine because his readme file, first of all, say, welcome to this project. And this, he used a lot of emojis and he also talked about using GIFs, using really bite-sized content so people don't feel like it's a lot of cognitive load on them but for now please accept my apology i'm not creating a very beautiful readme file but uh, you have resources to go back and change them and make it better okay so we just saw what markdown is you can for example have a header header two header three you can go on after header four actually doesn't make a lot of sense because it's just a bold letter. You can have bullet points. And so on, right? Good. So now what I want to do is help you create your first website if you haven't done it already in github and that's very scary and at this point i'm like oh my god are we ready yet do i want people to see what i have written do i want people to see this really clumsy readme file right do i want people to read what i wrote and do i want them to spot mistakes because we are calling it open research project at this point i'll say yes and what i'm trying to do here is that i'm creating a website for you so my audience are you and i have to just worry about what you are going to get out of this is that i'm trying to share things simply so you can look at what it looks like i can invite people if my project is serious i can add information and people can look at it without worrying about what is github where in github my project exists and I can be open about the project, right? So I want to be open about the project. And that's why I said this is a test. I can be even more open about it by writing more details. But I'm ready. Let's just say I'm ready. And I hope you are ready too. So GitHub Pages, we will show you what it is. Uh, but to start with, GitHub Pages is a static st site hosted service that, like, that takes any HTML or CSS or any related file straight from your repository and puts it online and it gets hosted on something called github.io. So for example, my project here will be hosted first of all, if at all I allow it. So you, in order to allow that, what you're gonna do is go on settings, scroll down in your setting, and it says GitHub pages. So GitHub Pages is designed to host your personal organization or project pages from GitHub repository. And right now, what it says that I have chosen none option, I don't have my website yet. So when I click on this, I can now, because I have only one file on my main branch, I'll click on master branch and it gets immediately saved. So it says GitHub page source saved. So if I've, Scroll down further, it tells me your site is ready to be published at this. So what is this? Malvika Sharan is my GitHub username, .github.io, which is the domain. And then forward slash the repository name, friendly GitHub OLS. Now if I right click on it and open a new tab, you see that, so you have a website already with basic information. So obviously it looks really simple because we don't have like a special, if we go back on my repository, I don't really tell my GitHub exactly how my, I want my website to look like because I haven't created any design. And you'll be now 
like oh i don't want this to look like 90s website and i don't have the capacity to create a website so I, how can i make it look pretty so you can again go back to setting scroll down and very conveniently it will allow you to choose a theme for the big name you can go back and make it much more professional but for now let's choose some simple theme so you can check that there are a few themes which are for free you can choose how you want your website to look like so you can also go further down okay i think i will go for this one so i select theme Okay, and now I go back here, I refresh. It will take a bit. It will take like few few minutes or few seconds, but I will have my website with some prettiness. There's one more thing. Uh, I don't want you to test right now, but because it, it again takes a lot of time to have that, but you can customize your domain. So for example, I can customize what this name is rather than malvikasharan.github.io, I can call it something like test.githublesson.com. I'm not gonna commit this, but you can choose your domain name, but you need to be careful about it because there are certain guidelines of what kind of domains you can choose and that I would leave it for you to explore on your own. And with that, I'm finishing my part and I just want to stop sharing. Yo, can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, is it possible to unshare someone? Let me figure out if I more, click on more, withdraw co-host permission, nope. Stop video. Uh, is it on the bottom somewhere? Is there um, right at the bottom of your screen? Oh, wait, what about this? Oh, stop participants sharing. I found yes. it. There Thank you go, you. you're free. <laughs> <laughs> like the new, the big red panic, panic button, right? <laughs> yes. So, can you all now try creating your own website, then add a plus one, and then you will take over? So I have a suggestion, actually. Uh, how oh. about how about if we go into breakout rooms of about yes. three people? Um, I'll send you all in, and then when you try making a website, this could be any content. If you, it could be genuine, serious content. If you can't decide what to put, tell us about that dinosaur <laughs> um, from the icebreaker exercise. Um, I'll send you all in now and um, post the URL to your favorite dinosaur or serious website once you're done so that we know when everyone's ready to come back. Uh, and if you need help, you can put your hand up using the, um, well, I think it's ask for help is the breakout room feature. And then Malvika or I can come into the room and come and sort things out for you. Uh, can I have some thumbs up if we're good? I can see at least two thumbs up. Three thumbs up. Okay, right. So there's two to three people per room. Uh, and your and all verbal are all good. I can hear someone talking, but I'm not sure if it's background noise or not. Okay, I think we were getting a lot of questions about linking to other file. How many people manage to do this or do you want uh, either you or I to demonstrate that too? Yeah, can you demonstrate that actually? Thank you. Yeah, Mave uh, could you do that one? I don't yeah, know. I'll do that, yes. Um, okay, so here I am on my GitHub repository. I decide to have a file and I'll call it new file. I want to have this file named as um, my friends.md. So I can directly create a file like this and I'll say I will list 
all my friend's name here. And I'll start with you. I see a few people on my front, so I'm, you all my friends, but I'm gonna add only three more, <laughs> three, four names. <laughs> okay, I have these three people on the front. So I'll say first set of names and I committed this file. Okay, so my file appears here, right? Friendly GitHub OLS. And now I know that there is a file called myfriends.md. So if I write my friends at the end of my URL. Oh. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to load. Also, Don't worry if this happens to you. This is very normal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, takes, it takes a bit. But let's come back to it. But let's say this is only you who knows that this file exists you can go and write on your readme file. So for linking anything, you can, for example, I want to link, this is OLS. So I want to hyperlink OLS. To hyperlink, you would put the word in the square bracket and right next to it without a space, you will create a round bracket and inside that round bracket you will I have to first look for it science.org yeah we really need to fix the lack of double double <laughs> so it's open life oh my god I can't even remember myself anymore. Oh, there you go HTTP yeah we need to probably fix that so now I have a link I'll put it in this circular bracket. And if I look at the preview, it should just show me the link. It is hyperlinked now. But now if you want to add your own file, this is my friends list. And I wanna put my friend list in here. So this is about not giving it a path. So I'm not sure how many of you have already worked on terminal, but if your file exists where you're creating this readme file, you'll put the dot, a forward slash, and the name of the file. And I think I forgot my name. Here it is. Uh, do you mind if in the Google doc, I remove the space between the name in the square brackets and the website in brackets because I was doing that syntax error. I was leaving a space. Uh, you, no, you shouldn't be leaving space between square and circular bracket. Okay. Name can have space in, in the okay. square bracket. That's fine. And then linked files. So I commit changes and I go to this. It takes time, but it should appear right below this. This is one another test that I had done. It takes you to this another file to link page. Um, so I will leave this repository for a few days for you to go and check, but this is how you would hyperlink. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a, Samuel, I have my mentor call in five minutes. All right. Yes, thanks. Man, he's probably gone. No, he, he's still there. Thanks for joining. Okay. I'm not leaving a lot of time for you. So um, I, I, I'll, st I'll steal the screen. So I'm going to start. I'm going to go really fast. And I'm really sorry about that. I'm going to do my best. Um, but I'm also going to say, questions, put them in the Google Doc, put them in the chat. Um, Avika and I both have spent a lot of time teaching this, so we're very, very happy to help out and um, it, anything we missed or went too fast. So I'm going to try sharing my screen. Also, just so you know that this video will be available to all of you. So if you want to go back and and exactly do what you is going to show you, go for it. Okay. so. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the project management issues and about collaboration as well. Uh, so I'm just gonna 
close lots of windows. So can you see at the moment the agenda, I'm guessing? Yep, I've got nods, thank you. It's so helpful when people nod and <laughs> Uh, right, so what I have here on my GitHub, uh, this is the GitHub for the Open Life Science page. Um, so there's a few things I want to show. One is issues. So over here, hopefully you all have um, worked a little bit with issues when we were commenting on each other's uh, issues for the, um, on, on the original GitHub repo, just for communication. Uh, we tend to use these as well a lot for um, recording things that maybe need to be done. Um, and one thing that is really nice is that you can use labels. And this is a bad example because it doesn't have any labels, so I'm going to find a different repository. Um, so this is one that I work on with work. Okay, so here we have a lot of issues on Intermine, but this is a very long running uh, software <laughs> Uh, repository. So a really useful thing we have is that you can add labels to any issue that you're working on and it makes it very easy to sort what's going on. So for example, we could say things that are under testing, we've labeled with please test. And then I can click on that label and it actually automatically filters everything and makes it available. So if you are doing project management and you have task A, B, C and D, it's a nice way to organize it. If you're creating software, then it might be um, a bug or it might be a fix or it might be something like that that you want to add to it. Um, another nice aspect of these is uh, that once you've created issues, you can go to the project board. This is a project tab. Uh, can you see when I circle my cursor, by the way? You can, excellent. So if this isn't enabled, then you can go to the settings tab to enable the projects uh, if it's not aut automatically enabled. Um, but as an example of a project board and why one would wish to use it, um, here is the Intermine road Roadmap. Uh, so this is software where we say in January we would like to have all of these issues completed. Um, and again, you can see some of the various different labels we have. You can tell here that they've been completed, closed or merged. And then you can say in spring, here are some of the features that we'd like to be released. Um, we'd like to be, what's the word, releasing? Yeah, releasing is the right word. Um, and then finally, longer term, we don't even have a date because it's so far in the future, but it's a really nice way to roadmap what you've been working with. Um, other ways you could organize this, you could say, for example, um, on the left, I have my to do's, I have my doings and I have my done. Um, and so these are draggable. I hope I don't get in trouble for randomly dragging stuff, but <laughs> I'll put that back where it was. Um, so the idea here is that actually it can be really easy. Just imagine it's like sticky notes that you're moving them from one column to the next. Um, so that's some, one really convenient feature uh, with some of the project management. Um, another feature that we'd hoped to actually manage in breakout rooms is the collaborating. So right now you've worked on your own website um, and each time that you've worked on your own website, you've updated and you've seen the differences. Um, but when you want to work on someone else's website, how do I do that, you might ask, which is quite a reasonable question, really. So I will pull back the open life site. I don't want to randomly accidentally make changes on my work website. People would not appreciate that. Um, so if I look here, I can go into settings, uh, on the settings tab on my main repository, and I go to manage access, and then it'll ask me for my password to make sure I'm really me. Uh, and then I can say I want to invite someone else. So I could type in and add, I don't know why Malvi cares in here because I know she has uh, <laughs> the rights to edit this, but I could add Malvika. Okay, maybe she is there somewhere because it should have popped her up by now. But anyway, you can search for someone's username, you add it, and then you click enter and that actually invites them. I think you need oh. to do click the invite teams or people. Button. There we go. Uh, Someone knows better than me. Sorry, I just did this the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. And I did the same thing where I typed it in. in there the we are. <laughs> um, I will let Malvika be admin. This is generous. You can be admin on your own project, Yay. Malvika. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and once they have that role, you can even say, for example, um, things like, I want them to be a maintainer. Uh, but not to have full admin rights so they can't delete the repository or maybe they have right, right access, but there's other things that they can't do. So there's different levels of access that you can give to your collaborators. What's my time? Uh oh, rush. Right. Once you have invited people, one thing that they can do, and there is not going to be time to do this uh, in a proper real life scenario, but click on fork. 
Once you've forked a project, that means you've created a copy that's your very own copy. So for example, if I click on fork here, you can see that I already have one. This is under my username, not the Open Life Science Organization. Um, so there's a slightly different uh, variation. And then once you've made um, that fork, you can make a pull request. Uh, so as an example, um, I'm going to just do a tiny, tiny, tiny edit on the Open Life Science website. Uh, okay, on the 404 page, I'm going to go to this little pencil, I'm going to edit the file, and I'm going to have another sad smiley at the end of our 404 page. Right, and now, like Malvika said, when you say commit directly to the master branch, but I can also create a new branch or create a new fork um, and say this is a patch. I'm going to call it edit 404. Um, so try and name it something meaningful when you're making a pull request because it makes it easy to sort if you've done multiple different pull requests. Now I'm proposing this file change. This means I haven't actually changed it yet. Um, but now the maintainers of the website, which in this case is myself, Movika and Berenice, should be able to see the pull requests that are live. So now you can see here there's two pull requests in this tab. And that's basically me saying, please, can I make this update? Um, and Malvika could review it and then click on merge. Or since I actually already own the repository, I could click on merge as well. Um, so I didn't write a description because I'm rushing. Uh, normally it's better to write a description, say, hey, I've made a pull request. These are the changes I've made and here's why you should merge it. Um, this is just polite. And it's also really nice if you go back in three months, you don't remember why you've done something, explaining why you've done it can be incredibly useful. Um, so that is, it is now two o'clock or on the hour, whatever hour, wherever you may be. Um, I am happy to answer any quick questions and I'm sorry that this was an incredible rush for the last 10 minutes. Um, does anyone have anything they want to, get to ask or feel free to just filter off if you've got something else you need to be doing? Yo, can you tell us where can I see the history of I a file? Can. Right, so if I go to, uh, clicking on code, uh, so GitHub is very code centric, even though, like we've mentioned, it's great for collaborating in all sorts of other ways. Um, Can I see example for readme file, maybe? Let's have a look. Readme. Here we go. So I click on readme. And then over here, um, top right-ish, there is a history. And we can see the changes that have happened over time and also who's done them. So we can see that Berenice added documentation and she's always, she's added some nice explanations. So we're setting a good example here, which is fantastic. You can see that Malvika has made some edits. Um, and here, like for example, with the initial commit that Berenice made earlier on. Um, and so we could actually theoretically revert to any of these commits if we wished, if like we made a terrible mistake and I thought, no, why have I done that? We could actually save it and go back to one of these previous files. Anything else to add or anything you think I've missed, Malvika? No, oh, I, I, we will give the material that we have and we'll also add more helpful material for you to look at. Um, sorry, you're not leaving you a lot of time, but um, I hope it helped all of you and you can test issues and pull requests on your own. More questions before we go. You can also type them in the um, Google Doc and we'll check that for a few days if you have other questions, but also chat or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gitter. Yeah, Gitter or the mailing list. So the mailing list isn't just a one-way thing. Please feel free to use it for discussions and questions and queries. Okay, so we close this. I think we shall. It's been lovely to have you us when you have questions. Okay, bye. All. Thanks so much. Bye.